Hey Pally, it's Isabel Harding. Today is September 9th and today we look at national news as Hurricane Irma threatens Florida and some info about what happened at Town & Country this morning. But first, today's daily pick was sent in anonymously. They snapped an image of the team presentation yesterday. They captioned the pick, I'm crying and not in a good way. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Also, remember to help out Ben Felter and vote for how a dog should wear their pants on Twitter. The poll stays open until next Tuesday, and if you want your pick featured on the air, be sure to tweet it to us at Pallium Focus. On the top of the news today, there were a series of fires at town and country this morning that could be heard on campus. Ben Minuti was on the scene with more. This is Finn Minuti reporting live for In Focus News. Today at around 7.30, Cisco Home appeared to have had a small fire inside. If you, if you look in the back area over Now onto some national news. We have all heard about Hurricane Irma, which is threatening Florida just a week after the devastation from Hurricane Harvey in Texas. In Focus is Nor Navid is in the studio with more. Nor as you can see behind me, this GOES 16 weather satellite loop shows Hurricane Irma heading straight towards Florida. At first, people were hoping Irma would take turn away from Florida, but that isn't the case. As you can see here, traffic headed north on I-75 is pretty thick as people try to evacuate. Due to, due to Florida's geography, there is no way to evacuate east or west, so there is essentially only one way out of the state. As we attend regu regular classes today in Florida, high school classes have been canceled and schools, such as this one, South Dade High School, are turned into shelters. In Focus would like to investigate the effect the storm is having on students and staff at Pali. Although we are far from the storm geographically, we'd like to see how the events in Florida are affecting those of our community with family and friends in the Sunshine State. If you have a personal story relating to the storm and evacuation, please email us at bulletin at infocusnews.tv with the subject line Irma. I'll be following the storm and its effects on our community throughout the next week, next few weeks. Back to you, Maddie. <laughs> Thanks for that update, Noor. Now for today's campus bulletin. Students wishing to apply for the Pleasance Award and submit hours for senior transcripts need to visit pally.net slash community service for all info and directions. The deadline for seniors is today and for all other grades is Friday, September 22nd. The deadline for signing up for Pally's parking permit lottery is Wednesday, September 13th at 1230 p.m. Seniors will have first priority, followed by juniors. See Mr. Brickinson for more info. The Pali Science Olympiad team is hosting an informational meeting today in room 1702 during lunch. Sign-ups for tryouts are also available at pallysciology.org. Sources of strength will be having a Who is your trusted adult on campus campaign at lunch on Tuesday, September 12th. Lots of great stuff in the world of sports happened yesterday. Maddie Drucker is in the studio with all the latest. Thanks, Isabel. Yesterday there were quite a few games, but on the only scores reported were from water polo and volleyball. Yesterday at 4.45, girls JV water polo took on Los Altos in their pool. Pally took a fantastic win with a score of 10 to 4. Varsity girls water polo also took on Los Altos yesterday, but unfortunately lost 14 to 8. Boys Varsity Water Polo also played Los Altos yesterday and had a similar result. They lost 7-3. Girls Volleyball took on Menlo in our own gym last night with JV winning 2-0 where player Ella Jones was a star out on the court yet again. The Varsity team also beat Menlo 3-0. Great job, girls. Yes, today, Girls Varsity Golf heads over to Mountain View to tee off against Gunn at 3. Boys Water Polo stays home for two games against St. Francis. The JV game is at 3, while the Varsity game is at 5.30. The football teams are off to Los Altos for the JV game at 4 and the var and Varsity game at 7. Good luck, Fikes. Well, that's all for sports. Back to you, Isabel. To most people's dismay, Cooking with Cooper was not aired yesterday. The segment was cut last minute due to time. We know many students love Cooking with Cooper, but maybe not enough to miss three minutes of lunchtime. We know that many people felt betrayed by us, but today, Cooper returns with his latest dish. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Cooper. Before we jump into the main recipe, we'll be taking one of the one of the one requests that we received this week from Sam Embersitz. Thanks Sam, here's how you cook air. I hope that reaches you. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. You know, while cooked air is great, you know what's better than cooked air? Paid tuition. Happy that one scene from the two of Bob and just around here on the side sheet. 50 shades of gray. Sliced bread. Che cheesecake. For this recipe, you will need cream cheese at room temperature, caster sugar, eggs lightly beaten, plain flour, the zest of a lemon, raspberries, and strawberries. 
All right, so the first step is you want to uh, turn on your oven and bake it to uh, 356 Fahrenheit. I'm just gonna start it. And you know, a little uh, unknown secret is that uh, if you actually offer something to your oven, you can uh, make it heat up faster. Money will work fine. Now you want to butter your pan. Okay, now you want to beat together your cream cheese and sugar. And then you want to add your beaten eggs bit by bit until combined. Finally, add the flour and lemon zest, then fold through the raspberries. Spoon the mixture into the prepared cake tin, tapping it against the work surface to remove any bubbles and help the raspberries rise up from the bottom. Okay, now to keep your cheesecake from cracking, you can either use two methods. One, lotion, or two, a method called Bain-Marie, where you just get a bunch of hot water, put it into a pan, you throw it into your oven with your, with your cheesecake, and uh, it will make sure it doesn't crack. All right, okay, so our oven's heated up. We're gonna put our stuff in, middle rack, and next to it, we're gonna put in our water. You let it just gonna cook in there for 35 minutes. Okay, so our cheesecake has been there in our oven for about 55 minutes now. And this is our cheesecake and when we shake it, it doesn't jiggle too much, so that's great. And that means it's ready and uh, you can turn off your oven now and uh, serve your cheesecake. Okay, our cheesecake is done. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Please send some suggestions so we can do them or maybe not. Thank you and have a, a good day. Stay, stay hungry. Well, that does it for us today. Remember, you can get the latest news from InFocus anytime, anywhere by checking us out at www.infocusnews.tv or find us at InFocus News on Instagram and Facebook and follow us at Pally and Focus on Twitter and Snapchat. Until next time, have a great day, Pally. It's free.